this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to corporations. First question. Number of shares a corporation can sell. A. Issued stock. B. Outstanding stock. C. Common stock. D. Preferred stock. And E. Authorized stock. So we'll go through this again and see if we can eliminate some options with the process of elimination. Question. Number of shares a corporation can sell. A. Issued stock. So the stock that is issued, and again, we're going to try to go through these and just see if we can eliminate some that would be more obviously uh, not part of the problem in order to go through the process of elimination. Now, the issued stock may not be a term that we fully you know, understand, so we could keep that for now and say issued stock. Outstanding stock, uh, the number of shares a corporation can sell. So if they're outstanding, that, you know, that might tell us that they have been sold. They're outstanding, they're out in the market. So that really doesn't tell us just by the terminology that uh, what could be sold. It basically, by the terminology, it looks like what has been sold. So I don't think that outstanding stock would be it. Common stock. Now the common stock is basically just a kind of stock. It doesn't really tell us the number of the common stock, which would typically be what we're talking about that could be distributed. So common stock uh, doesn't really tell us how many shares could be distributed. D says preferred stock. And again, that's another kind of stock. Typically, we're talking about common stock when talking about numbers of shares distributed. But preferred stock doesn't tell us number of shares. By that name, you would think that's just telling us what type of stock we're talking about. So I'd say we can eliminate D. And E says authorized stock. Uh, and that sounds like some kind of legal term that could give us some authorization for the issuance of stock. So we're left with A and E. Let's go through this again and we'll, we'll pick the final answer. Question number of shares a corporation can sell is either A or E, either issued stock or authorized stock. So between those two, of course, the issued stock would mean that we already sold them. They've been, they've been, or they're, they're issued. They're, so the authorized stock, on the other hand, is what we could issue, what we could sell. So this is the authorized stock, in other words, is not what's outstanding there. That's what could be outstanding, what we have the legal right to be outstanding at this point. Uh, outstanding is what's actually in the market at this time. So the correct answer is E. So one last time, number of shares a corporation can sell, E, authorized stock. Next question. Corporate board of directors A. Are voted on by management. B. Run the normal corporate activities. C. Are the stockholders. D. Are government agents. And E. Have final authority for managing corporate activities. So we will go through this again with the process of elimination. Corporate board of directors A are voted on by management. So if we don't really understand the board of directors, we might think hmm, maybe management votes for the board of directors. Maybe management is the one that does that. So I'll keep that for now. B says run the normal corp uh, corporate activities. Now the board of directors doesn't normally run the corporate activities. That's usually run by management. So the day-to-day, -day, meaning the day-to-day -day work is done by the employees, employees including the upper management, uh, which would, would then hire employees to run the day-to-day -day operations. So I would say the board of directors, no, not really running the normal day-to-day -day stuff. C, are the stockholders. And um, yeah, we, we might think that, so I'll keep that for now. And D says, uh, are government agents. Now the board of directors doesn't necessarily need to be government agents. So the government may regulate with like the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission or whatnot, but uh, not really the board of directors. Those are, <laughs> those are not government agents, hopefully. Uh, yeah. E says, have final authority for managing corporate activities. And that seems, you know, like reasonable too. Note also when we look at these types of problems, if there's one answer that seems more, you know, longer and more detailed, not that there's any one that's too long here or too detailed. 
I would say that you may want to give that one more consideration because oftentimes a longer, more detailed answer is trying to hedge any type of uh, wrong statement in it, meaning it's trying to be as specific as possible in order to be correct. So if there's a longer statement that seems more defined, then that may be one that you would consider more so <laughs> if we didn't know what the answer was. So if we go through this again, corporate board of directors, either A, C, or E, A, are voted on by management, C, are the stockholders, and E, have final authority for management corporate, managing corporate activities. So if we look at A and C, are voted on by management, are the stockholders. Uh, that might, if you look at those two, you might start to think, hmm, who are the stockholders, who are the board of directors, who are management? And when we start to piece this together, the stockholders are the owners, the stockholders then are in ultimate control, but they are so do by voting on the board of directors. And then board of the directors hires management. So it's not the case that management hires the board of directors or votes on the board of directors. The board of directors assigns management. And the stockholders are the ones that are going to vote on the board of directors. So that means that the board of directors are not necessarily stockholders the stockholders are going to be the ones that determine uh, who is on the board of directors and therefore will act as you know agents or for the best interest of the stockholders and then e says have final authority for managing corporate activities and that's ultimately the case right so the day-to-day -day activities are going to be done by management and the board of directors has the final authority because they're the ones that are responsible for uh, putting management in place and making those big type of uh, overarching decisions rather than the day-to-day -day decisions. So one more time, corporate board of director, uh, corporate board of directors, E, have final authority for managing corporate activities.